guys and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed and in this video we're going to be designing a variation of the callout component that we created in the last video. We're also going to be designing a new fold component. So let's get started. So this is the component that we are going to be designing in this video. We have again our main section frame. Inside this main section frame we have our component, I just called it fold because it kind of looks like a fold. Inside our fold frame we have two frames. We have an image wrapper with an image fill applied to it. And then we have this description frame. Inside that description frame we have a text element and we have these two callouts. This callout frame has a callout description frame inside of it with two text elements with eight pixel pattern between them and it also has auto layout applied to it and then we have our tertiary button and that's how our callout component is made so yeah so let's start building this out so i'm going to go back to our main desktop frame where we had created these components in previous videos and i'm going to start creating my fold component so i'm going to increase the size of my desktop frame and then I'm going to click F on the keyboard to add a new frame. This is going to be our main section frame. I'm going to drag it inside this desktop frame and align it to the bottom of our callout section and increase the size of the bit here. And I'm going to rename this frame to section fold. I'm going to toggle my columns on and this is where we're going to be designing our fold component. So our fold component consists of two frames inside of it. We have our fold description and then our fold image wrapper. Each of these components or each of these frames is spanning six columns each. So let's start by creating the description. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to add a frame inside my section fold frame. And I'm going to have this frame span six columns. edge and that to the edge six six perfect I'm going to rename this frame to description wrapper and inside the description wrapper we're going to have a header and two callout components I'm going to start by adding my header so I'm going to add a text element inside the description wrapper frame and then I'm going to go grab some dummy text and I'm using blindtextgenerator.com which I'll post a link to in the description of this video I'm just going to copy and paste this text into my text element. I'm going to detach this paragraph shared style. Give it auto height so that my width is always fixed, but my height is responsive according to the text inside of my text element. I'm going to style it like an H2. Then I'm going to align it to the edges of my column because I know each of these columns is 64 width. So that means it's going to be at 64 from my desktop router frame. Great. And let's just bring it down a bit. 64, 64, 64. So now let's just start creating our callouts. So I'm going to grab the callout component that we created in the previous video, and I'm just going to start editing this instance separately. So first, I'm going to start by removing our auto layout settings. I'm going to turn that to zero for now. I'm going to toggle my columns off, control G. I'm going to change this header to be a smaller header. I'm going to change that to H4. That's a little too big. Maybe let's create a new shared style. And I'm going to call this style a subtitle. So I'm going to detach this style. I'm going to give it the same 16. I'm going to go with maybe a medium. And that will be our new shared style. Now let's create it. I'm going to call it subtitle. Great. So unfortunately, we can't just resize the component and everything will start aligning properly. Um, maybe they'll add that feature into auto layout eventually, but for now we don't have it. So I'm just going to detach this instance for now to detach the instance from my master component. So now we have our callout frame inside our canvas. I'm going to remove this auto layout for now. I'm going to move all auto layout so I can start working with my component from scratch. Maybe let's just keep our description one. I'm gonna to toggle my columns on again and I'm gonna bring down the size of my text. So let's bring it down to maybe the third column and the edges of the first column. Let's just move this column up this way. Okay, let's just move it away. Okay. 
perfect. And our text, we want it to be at the edge of this third column. And our frame should be perfect. And now let's just bring it down a bit. <clears throat> and now let's align our button. It's going to be, let's say, at 16 from the description. So we have our call out description, and then we have our tertiary button. Let's actually, I don't know why this tertiary button went all the way over there. And they're inside this call out wrapper frame. Let's get rid of this main call out frame and then delete this one. So we have a call out wrapper frame. Inside that, we have a description frame and a button. I'm gonna now reapply auto layout and reapply auto layout to our main callout frame too. I'm just gonna resize it to the size of the content inside and I'm holding command down while I'm resizing. Bring it to the bottom as well. And now let's apply auto layout to this frame as well. So if I were to change my paragraph, my button's being pushed down, great. If I were to change my title, my paragraph's pushed down. Perfect, this is working how we expect it to. So now we have our callout wrapper frame. I'm actually gonna call this frame callout SM. And then I'm going to turn this frame into a reusable component. So I'm gonna cut it, go to my molecular elements, and I'm gonna paste it next to our large callout. So next I'm gonna click paste. And I'm gonna rename this callout to to callout large. And then I'm going to click create component on this one. So call it SM, create component. So now if you go to your assets tab, you'll see in your molecular elements, you have a callout tab, and then you have your large callout and your small callout. Perfect. So now let's go back to our desktop frame and underneath my text element, I'm gonna go grab those small callouts. I'm gonna drag and align it. Let's bring that to let's say maybe 32. Now let's just make another instance of this. So I'm gonna hold option down and drag. 24, and let's see what the width is here. They're both at 64 from the edges. That's actually perfect. So, great. So we're almost done. Now let's just bring the description frame down, our description wrapper. So it's at 64 from the bottom as well. Perfect. So now let's actually turn this description wrapper frame into a reusable component as well. So I'm going to cut and paste it inside my molecular elements. And let's put it underneath our call out. Give it a fill. I'm gonna go with white for now. I'm gonna take a white shared style. And let's maybe give it a more unique name. Let's call it description bold. And then click create component. So now if we go to our assets tab, we should have in molecules our description bold. Great, so now let's go back to our desktop frame. And inside my section fold, I'm gonna drag and drop our description fold. I'm gonna toggle my columns on. Align it to Columns, one more. So it's at 204 from the sides, perfect. Now let's go and make it at 104 from the top. 104, maybe let's bring it closer a bit. Let's go with 80. Sure, that looks good. Let's bring down our main section fold frame a bit. So that it's at 80 from the bottom as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 80, perfect. We're almost done. Let's give this section fold a different color. Let's have it take on this beige color that we have in our GIF. So I'm just gonna detach my white. I'm gonna go with a new fill. I'm just gonna drag and get this color picker. And I'm going to create a new shared style for this beige. Four dots plus, and I'm gonna call it sand. Sandy, let's call it Sandy. Cool. So now all that's left is to make our image frame. So I'm gonna click F on the keyboard and drag so that it fits six columns. Six, 
six. Drag it to the top so it's the same height as our description frame. And then I'm going to add a image inside this frame. I'm going to first rename this frame to image wrapper, and then I'm going to give it a fill, and it's going to be an image fill. I'm going to choose an image. You can use any image, but and I'll provide the image that I'm using to the description of this video. So I'm going to go with this image. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. All that's left is just to put them inside a frame. So I'm going to grab my description fold, my image wrapper, option command G to place them inside of a frame. I'm going to rename this frame to fold. And I'm going to give this frame the sandy fill. So I'm going to turn my fill on and go with sandy so that it's not cut in the middle. Last thing we have to do is turn this fold into a reusable component. So I'm going to cut my fold component, command X, go to my molecular elements page and paste it in. I'm gonna put it next to my slider. And I'm going to go to the top and click create component. So now if you go to your assets tab, you will have this fold component. So now let's go back to our desktop frame and just drag and drop the component in. Drag and drop, and we are literally done. Center, center. So now it's centered at this frame. We got eight at the top and bottom, perfect. Now maybe let's just give it a box shadow just so it stands out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to effects. Gonna edit this style, maybe give it a AD blur. Maybe let's bring this down a bit, let's say 16. Eight. No, let's go with 16, a little darker looks better. Cool, that looks good. And we can also create a shared style for our box shadow. So if you click the four dots here and you click the plus, you could say box shadow. And you can reuse this box shadow just like you would reuse your colors or your other shared styles. And that's it, we've done. Let's just bring this down a bit. And that's it, we have a new fold component. So in this video, we edited our large callout component to create a smaller variation of it, and we created this new fold component. Make sure to check out the next video where we will be designing a testimonial component. I'll see you there.